Isaiah chapter 61 and verse, starting in verse 1 through verse 3. One, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach the good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called the trees of righteousness, uh, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. I want you to notice that phrase, uh, to give unto them beauty for ashes. Heavenly Father, uh, as we assemble here again, Lord, thank you for the Sunday school hour. Thank you for those that, uh, that worked in the kitchen and cooked the food, those that uh, helped clean up the coffee that was spilled um, on the front of you. And I pray, God, you'd bless each and every one. Lift us up, God, and uh, encourage your people, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Oh, here it is. I want to talk about beauty for ashes or turning your, your sighing into singing. There's another uh, portion of scripture I'm going to read in Psalms uh, chapter 147. Psalm 147 and verse 3. The Bible says, He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. Healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. One of the, one of the things that we spend a lot of time on, I think, uh, as Christians is trying to understand where we are with God and what God expects from us. We've been through a, a, a mild <laughs> seasons of, of uh, opposition, and it's not that bad. Kathy had a mini stroke, but she's... Uh, uh, She's doing good, and uh, I, I had eye surgery, which is a real blessing uh, because uh, I thought I was losing the sight I, in, in my right eye, and so the doctor checked it out and said, no, you just need, you got a detached retina. So they reattached it, and they put a gas bubble behind your eye, and I can see from here up, so when I preach, I'll look here, and I won't have to look at y'all. I'll close this other eye. But um, so we're going through these little things in our truck engine blue, and we're getting that fixed. He's working on that. Shouldn't take more than, what, two years with Angel? He had one of our cars for a year. Wasn't it a year? And, uh, and then after that, our transmission went out the other day on our, on our car. And I'm like, okay. And then Kathy's blood sugar was uh, kind of high two nights ago. And she uses her phone to monitor that. It tells her when, you know, when it's high. Well, that her phone locked up, and so so it's it's is are you hurting? I'm not hurting. I got food. I got shelter. My house didn't burn down. I got a. Uh, I'm not going through what Patrick's going through, and some other people are going through, and uh, it's 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 just an aggravation. But you do. You, you think, okay, God, what is this opposition, which I think it is, and it's just normal routine stuff. It's not, like I said, it's not that bad. Four more weeks and I'll be able to see. I've already went through four weeks of it, but, you know, when it goes one after another after another, and we've went through similar things like this in 40 years of being, uh, serving the Lord, and you kind of get used, you understand this is life. You know, stuff happens, aggravations happen. But uh, it really, yeah, I had a long talk with the Lord last night, and the biggest problem with me is there's things I want to do. We bought some land. I want to get out there. I want to plant stuff. I want to get a well dug. I want to do it all. And uh, uh, I want to build an illegal pond out there, and I don't know how I'm going to do that. Jerry's going to help me figure it out. But uh, 
You, you don't own the water in the ground. It goes like this far down. You own the rocks, you own the dirt, but that's far as it goes. So that's nuts. But anyway, I'm want, there's things I want to do. So I think, what, what is God doing? What is God allowing? What does God want? Again, what we're going through is not, not that big a deal. Uh, it sounds like it sometimes, but not in any pain. So uh, anyway, it's just, it's just an aggravation and waiting, waiting, waiting. So beauty for ashes. Here's what God wants to do for us. This is the mindset that we need when we've had hip surgery or knee surgery or uh, all these things some of you guys are going through and uh, it takes and we don't even know what other people are going through and you gotta sit there and hurt and wait and hurt and wait and you got the preacher telling you trying to milk it. It's, you know, it's not that bad and uh, <laughs> I think when you get mad, somehow or another it helps you, it motivates you. But uh, here's what God wants for us, whatever we're going through. He wants to take our ashes and turn that to beauty. So the explanation of beauty for ashes, ashes represent something destroyed by fire. You build a fire and you put wood in there and it burns up and it gives off heat. And uh, that's, that's uh, destroyed. Ashes depict a person in mourning or sorrow. And you know, Israel is pretty visible when somebody's going through it. Uh, they, would, they would have on sackcloth and that would and throw ashes on their self. And it would show other people that they're mourning. They're hurting. And uh, some calamity. Some death, something has happened. And so uh, a person in mourning would do that. Uh, sometimes ashes symbolize God's uh, correction uh, or punishment that's due. And, you know, we all ask ourselves that. I'll tell you one thing. In my experience, Christians that are walking with God sometimes go through more than anybody else because God can trust them. And he's got a purpose. He doesn't waste anything. He doesn't forget anything. Everything we go through has a purpose. And there's nothing more aggravating than a novice Christian trying to explain to you what you're going through. <laughs> they don't have a clue. Uh, and, you know, it, it turns your world upside down. So ashes, uh, sometimes God corrects us. But when you're going through it, you know. And there's ways you can discern, is this Satan or is this opposition or is this God correcting me? And sometimes, and you know, that person knows, nobody else knows, but you know when God's correcting you and you know when it's just you're going through things in life. So uh, uh, sackcloth is a garment that depicts sadness. Uh, and it's what an amazing expression it is. Uh, so we, we should become, number two, examples of beauty for ashes. Can we thrive in, uh, in any circumstance? Can we worship when we're down? I think our best worship ought to come when we're down. Uh, we need to be able to connect with God. We need to be able to get from God. We are here, if, if you say, what am I here to do besides drink coffee? We are here to worship Amen. God, to lift him up, uh, to, to extol the name of God uh, for his greatness. And there's nothing more empowering in the Christian life is when you rise above whatever disappointment you're going through in your life and you reach out to God and you connect with God, that's a powerful thing. And that's uh, something that should bring forth a praise uh, in our life. So I think one of the, uh, somebody mentioned uh, uh, Bible trivia art, said that what's the first thing Eve did 
after she ate of the forbidden fruit, I believe was the question, and the answer was she went and messed up Adam's life, like most women. <laughs> it's just, I'm joking, usually the other way around, I think. But Eve exchanged her sinful ashes for beauty. You find her uh, appearing before God. They're hiding from God. They've made coverings for their self. That represents self-righteousness. And uh, God made coats of skin for them, uh, of, of, of uh, animal fur. And that represented the blood that was shed. Those animals had to die like the lamb, the lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world, the innocent for the guilty, and he made clothing for them. And uh, I, I, I've got a heart for people that are, have failed uh, the Lord, have sinned, and everybody knows about it, and then they uh, trying to get back to God. Uh, they had a failure in their life. They fell into sin, anything. I got a heart for them, I, I, and I tell them, if I get a chance, I tell them, I just charge right in there and say, hey, you know, you're forgiven. You ask God to forgive you. So whatever you did, you get it right with God, and you walk on with Jesus. That's what Lord wants us to do. David sure messed up. And David said, purge me with hyssop. And that's a cleansing of the leper. And we have to be that way in church. I know God has a standard for us, and God has accountability for us, and we're accountable uh, to the Holy Spirit, we're accountable one to another. But listen, somebody comes in here and they've been through some things in their life. Let's let them know they are forgiven. Let's let them exchange uh, beauty for ashes. Hannah was another one. She cried. She was in anguish. And she wanted a child. And so she was going to dedicate and did dedicate that child to the Lord she exchanged her sorrowful ashes for beauty. She went and prayed, misunderstood by the prophet, but she talked to God. And isn't it amazing what God will do if we'll just, just trust him and talk to him? And she exchanged uh, her uh, sorrowful ashes for beauty. Rahab exchanged her immoral ashes for beauty. There's one of those people I'm talking about and um, people that need help and need hope uh, that get, uh, get in, a, in a bad way in their life, sometimes just trying to survive, usually uh, people that are abused. There's a lot of people that were abused as children, a lot of people, and it's getting uh, more and more common and ignoring a child uh, and no discipline and no teaching is probably one of the worst things you can do. Uh, they need to be held accountable. They need, what is it Ellen said she needed? Uh, uh, consequences. They are explaining consequences to the twins. And Joel said, you know, you did something wrong. You want a spanking or what, or you, what do you want? She said, I think I'd like to have consequences. <laughs> Not having a clue what that means, but she knew it was something that is coming later. So she's putting it off as long as she could, but consequences. So Rahab exchanged her immorality uh, for, can you imagine, that? her life, that does something to a person. The Bible said when we're in any kind of immorality, so oh, I'm just having a good time, you're sinning against your own body. And people are living like that today from one partner to another to another. And, and it's... It, you're not built to do that. Psychologically, physically, you, you, it, it affects you, and, uh, and it changes you, and it warps you uh, when, when you live that kind of life. So what do you do? You, you get away from that, and you get to God. You give that up, and you exchange that. Uh, there's nothing better than worship. There's no experience in this life that's better than worship. I was telling uh, one of my kids the other day about, I said, you know, I, I still remember, I get flashbacks, not of drugs, 
but I get flashbacks of feelings that I had and sorrow that I had and hopelessness that I had before I got saved. I remember those moments. And it was like a voice was talking to me. So somebody or my mind was trying to tell me something, and I'm like, well, this is all there is. If I could just get this new thing, this new car, this new house, it's new clothes, and Lord, I love to shop. Hey, they got a Nordstrom's rack in Yakima. How many have been there? Can you say amen? Praise yeah. God. I'm going, you, Pat, how did you get over there? Okay. You raised your hand, said you've been to Nordstrom's rack, the one in Yakima? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I told you she wasn't her. Anyway, <laughs> you're a lollygagging. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, and stuff and I thought oh, if I could just get stuff if I could get listen to music if I could do something I'll get high on drugs I'll do something to make life meaningful man I've never I've been down I'm telling you we were talking about the other day uh, some of the experiences we've been through but when I get down I never get so far down that I feel, somebody said it like this, I feel better when I feel bad than I did when I was lost when I felt good. <laughs> did, I make, did I say that right? I feel better now. We were sitting there, and I'm, this stuff is bugging me. I want it to get gone. I want to I wanna get things done. I want to move on. Uh, and and uh, with life, and we're kind of carless in Seattle. They were, we're going through this little bump in the road, and I can't get that one to understand that if she doesn't quit eating sugar, she's going to die. So um, we're working on it, taking the sugar away. But it's just aggravation. You want to get through it, right? You want to get back to life. You want to get out of the bed. And you want to walk around, you want to go somewhere, you want to live life. But I tell you what, it's good to know. Me and my wife, she read me something. When was that? Last night? Yesterday, she read me something on Facebook. And it was a scripture that really answered what had been on my heart about God. Hey, God cares about you. And I went from zero to 60 spiritually in about five seconds. All that doom, all that gloom, all that uh, uh, ashes and sackcloth left when she read that scripture. I said, thank you, baby. That helped. Word of God works. And it just, it just, really, it just really met my need uh, spiritually. So Rahab, she's one, her immorality. Mary Magdalene exchanged her sh shameful acts for beauty. Jesus made people that had lived wicked lives feel accepted, feel forgiven, feel loved. And uh, I, I, I love that when we, when we see the worst of humanity. I remember Dr. Seitler, uh, I was listening to a message he had preached. I never knew this. We were at the Bible College in Greenville, South Carolina. And he had preached, I guess... Uh, it was kind of a, a, a radio message he preached or something, and he, he preached it at a, uh, at a place, a church in Greensboro, North Carolina. And I don't know how many miles that is, six, eight hours away or more. And he's at that church, and he's preaching a message, and he's talking about this woman that was in a choir that had been, uh, you know, a well-known prostitute in Greenville, South Carolina. I didn't even know they had any down there. But undoubtedly they did. This was probably in the 60s or 70s. And she was a prostitute. And he said uh, that she had heard him on the radio. She wrote him a letter. And she told him, uh, she said, I don't even feel, I don't even want you to touch the paper I'm writing on it. She gave a list of all the uh, abortions she had had and all the immorality. Uh, it was just horrible. And he said, she's in our choir now, 
And he said, I know her past, but he said, if I didn't know who she was, I wouldn't have a clue. And, and the funny story is, him and the pastor went out to eat in a restaurant there, and he said, a little girl come up and handed, uh, he, she had been, this lady had been supporting the broadcast, and she saw Dr. Seitler sitting with his preacher, and this little girl brought a letter, and she said, uh, I think you're Dr. Seitler, she said, I got saved a while back, and I was listening to the radio, and she said, here, I want you to have this offering. Since you're here, I won't have to mail it in. And he looked up, and it was a lady that he had just preached about, and of course, he had her come to the table, and, uh, and uh, she's living a good life. She's serving God. And uh, later on, you know, she, she got involved in that church. And it was just amazing. That's the kind of stories I live for. That's the kind of people I want to reach. There's nobody that cannot exchange the beauty for ashes. And the reason Satan beats us down so much is because he doesn't want us to be in a good frame of mind, in a worshiping frame of mind. He wants us to look beat down. He wants us to act discouraged. If we're wearing sackcloth and ashes and we're living in sorrow and we can't get out of it, we're no good for God. Uh, and witnessing, you can witness in the valley, but boy, we need, we, God wants us to have hope. Amen. God, you know, in, in Luke, uh, was it 418 and also in Isaiah, that scripture talks about uh, God has called me to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And, and to uh, free those that are in prison and help those that are down. And I pray all the time, God, get us to the people. Get the messages to the people that need hope. Have you ever encountered that? I know you have in your witness and somebody just absolutely in sackcloth and ashes. It's not because of a trial necessarily, but it's because they don't have God. And you get to tell them about Jesus. And you see that light go off and you see that hope. And it's not long they get in the house of God and they start telling other people. And for a preacher, that's what we live for. As to see somebody that you've helped that have, has grown and they're reaching out to other people. Changing beauty for ashes. God does that over and over again. We need to allow God to give us beauty for ashes. We need to allow God to help us and lift us up and encourage us so we can worship again. I came in here, we were, Kathy was over here, uh, I think it was Friday night that we're gonna put up some more Christmas lights as if we don't have enough up, but more Christmas stuff. And uh, we forgot they have a, uh, the Hispanic church has a service here. And so they started coming in, and we thought we better leave it. I would just came up here and stood up here for a minute and just realized the absolute necessity of God on me, in me, the Spirit of the Lord. I cannot do this without him. It is so important, and it's a burden. It is a burden. It's a good burden where I think, man, I have got, got to help people with the word of God. And I got to help myself. We need to allow God to give us joy for sorrows. Allow God to give us garments of praise. I preach a lot about worship and praise. I know what it does for us. We need to learn how to praise God. Somewhere, somehow. Do it however you want to do it, but make it biblical. Praising God is not Baptocostal. I don't know who taught y'all that, but it's not. Praising God is baptistic. Where when did you get here? You were here and you left. And never mind. We need to we need to praise God for me right quick, would you? I praise Jesus for being here. Amen. That's a testimony, but I want to hear a praise. Kathy, show them how to praise God. Praise God. That's it. So there's people that are in bondage. There are people that are in heaviness. Uh, we need to allow God to heal the hurt. How many get depressed in the holidays? 
and you have stuff, and that seems so crazy to people. But you know, when you, you the thing with us is, I come to resent all the junk we went through as kids and the turmoil. And one time a year, they were going to make up for all of it. Yeah. Is that isn't that how it feels? Yeah. You, you, you're going to get a Christmas tree, going to get presents. I worked for somebody that did that, and they were having a Christmas party, uh, where I worked, and uh, and all the negative stuff we had and we had to put up with. Uh, they said we have a Christmas, and I've done been through one Christmas party, and you cannot make up. For all the bad stuff and abuse in one, day. in one day. They don't make presents good enough for that. And you get where you resent it. And through the years, because of this sunshine right here, I hope she stays with me a few more years. Y'all pray for her that she'd understand that ice cream and cookies and cake is not good. But she's, she's doing good. Sunshine. Uh, when we, when we were first met, we were dating, she started smiling, and she never has stopped. And she's starting to lose her mind, but... I lost that a long time ago. Yeah. But, she's, but she laughs since she retired. And I thought, well, if she gets stuck there, that won't be so bad. I'll just tell her some stupid joke I told her the day before, and she'll laugh again. It's still pretty good, whatever God brings our way. Still, but sunshine, I, I was sorrow to the core. Sorrow. I did not trust people. And that one would drive up to my house in her little Ford Fairlane. Back then she weighed about 110 pounds. The good old days. <laughs> now it's 210. She doesn't care. <laughs> that bothers you women. That don't bother her. I know what bothers her. That does not bother her. She knows how I feel about it. But she had come up there, and when she's in a really good mood, I can't snap but one finger. I can't do this one. She'd be walking, snapping both fingers, zippity doo dah, and, and just look at the people that God brought in your life, the people that make you happy, the people you care about. Look for somebody. And if you guys that aren't married, is that funny? Anybody that wants to be married is married. And you got you people that had you people that had better sense, hats off to you. Find somebody that brings it completes you. Find somebody that brings joy. Don't do like Jay did, settle. Just <laughs> Peggy knows I love her. Allow God to give healing for her. Allow God to give relief of baggage. You don't have to stay down. You're going to get down. You're going to have uh, sad things in life. But God, who is rich in mercy, God wants to make us happy. The best memories I have in my life are being in the house of God. I'm glad our children got to see happy, trusting, uh, spiritual people in the house of God, we first got saved. I had no idea church could be that way. We need to be happy in the midst of trouble, in the midst of sorrow. You know, uh, I'll close with this. 40%, I don't know where they got these stats. I didn't make it up. 40% of the things uh, that we are anxious about never happen. 30% of things about the past can't be changed. I was thinking about mistakes I made in the past. Just grieve me. Just grieve me. One of them was being friends with Tim. That's my greatest regret. When we're criticized by others, I found out, and this happens ever so often, I'll get a note in my truck, and I can't tell you what it said. Tim found it. I didn't show it to him, but it was pretty bad. And they called me a man of God, and I was this, and I was that, and uh, uh, pretty bad stuff. I thought, here we go again. Next time I get one, of I'm, I'm, I'm walking on water. You're amazing. You help people. Blah, blah, blah. You know, people that don't even really know me, 
but that's their impression. And then, yeah, and, and I thought about that, and then afterwards my car breaks down. I'm a little paranoid. And then my other car breaks down, and I'm thinking, I'm going to borrow Jay's car. <laughs> they won't touch it. They'll be afraid. But, you know, you wonder. <laughs> you wonder what I, I think. Somebody doing something to that? I don't know. But uh, things concerning health uh, with stress makes worse. Real problems that we faced. I had a nightmare the other day about some bad people me and Art dealt with. And I had to meet with them. And I'm dreading it in my dream. I was so glad that, that uh, it was all a dream. I don't have to go through that again with them. And I know God's going to make right every wrong. Listen, God is giving us permission. The Holy Spirit is giving us permission to enjoy the fact that we have eternal salvation. We can enjoy that. We can enjoy the house of God. We can learn how to worship uh, and at least smile. Some of the people have been through the most stuff. I'm going to tell you what, if I'd been through what, there are several families in here. If I'd been through what you've been through in the past, I don't know if I'd come back to church. I'd, I'd hold some bitterness for a while. Some of you guys have been through some rough, several of y'all have been through some rough stuff. But you got up, you got ready, and you came to the house of God and you learned how to trust. You learned how to trust and verify. <laughs> trust but verify. Our Father God, we come to you in Jesus' name. We pray God you'd give us beauty for ashes and, and, and all for joy and gladness, and Lord, that we would prove the devil wrong Amen. and that we would stand up for you and whatever our condition, Lord, be quick to get our happiness back. Be quick and take only, Lord, uh, just somebody reading a verse of Scripture and we're right back in there uh, trusting God, loving God. Lord, I enjoy this journey I've never had anything like this before I got saved. I feel good being washed in the blood of the Lamb, that my soul is sealed under the day of redemption, and I want to live for you. It matters. I want to live for you. I want to reach others. And God, you've already done that. And uh, Lord, I pray for folks that we've witnessed to that uh, you would overcome Satan in their life, and they want to come to church, but... Lord, I pray they would come. Be with your people as we travel home, Lord, and uh, just enjoy this uh, holiday season with family and friends. And uh, Lord, if they don't have no family or friends, we'll be family and friends. We want to reach out and help people. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.